the joys and perils of uh, doing this on lunch break from work means that I'm getting started a little late, but it's all good. All Gucci. Um, welcome. Welcome. So I'm glad you're excited, Jason. Um, this is my second live end of the year list. And I think that the format actually worked pretty well when I did it last time. So I think we're going to do the same the same version where I'm going to start by just going through the list, not looking at a lot of comments. And then if there are comments at the end, then we'll we'll chit chat. But I'm here. I'm in my um, blanket that is vaguely like dress shaped. I'm knocking everything over today. Um, so sorry. It's just one of one of those days. Like, guys, it's almost Christmas. Come on. Um, yeah. Watching a break from work. Yes. Taking taking some time from work, especially if you're in corporate America like I am. There's not a ton happening right now. Um, so actually made this one. Yay. Good. I try to, I, I try to be better about mixing up times a little bit so different people can come. Okay. So I've been chatting for a couple minutes, letting people get in here and I think I'm ready to shift to the list. So today, um, Okay, sorry, one second. Okay, sorry. Like I said, people are uh, still doing things. And I'm like, guys, chill out. Come on. It's a couple days before Christmas. Can we all just chill out a little bit here? Um, so we're going to talk about, sorry, I'm trying to context shift here because Something crazy is happening over here to the side, but I'm supposed to be on lunch break, so I'm trying to focus. Okay, so context shifting at three o'clock for, or not three o'clock, at three minutes in for time stamping Mara. Um, we're starting the list. And so this is the general fiction list. So this is literary fiction, classics, and then like anything that is kind of a genre in betweener. So I actually this year have a lot of what I would describe as literary genre things that are on this list. And I have a full list of 10. I think this is the biggest list I've had in this area before. Um, because I made the executive decision to pull some of them from like speculative or mystery lists and put them onto this kind of general fiction list. Because I don't think they stand up necessarily when I think of them as genre pieces. But if I think of them as just sort of general fiction or literary fiction, I like them a lot more. So we have actually a lot to get through this time. So we'll start at the bottom and work our way up. Okay, so number 10, I'm going to say The Beautiful Ones by Sylvia Marino Garcia. This is definitely the one that I liked the best from her this year because um, I did a trying a new author video where I read three books from her to see if I liked her and liked her writing. And I did. She's a really interesting author. She plays in a lot of different genres, very thematically consistent. Um, and this is her take on sort of a historical romance. But the writing quality is really high. It definitely has a very high literary quality and I think is less satisfying as a romance than it is as sort of general historical fiction. But I did like the romance. Um, what are the names of these folks? I'm like a sieve when it comes to the names in, in these books. Um, 
Nina, that's right. So like there's some magic in this, I should say. There's a little bit of like magical realism in this. So it's Nina and she's like being swept away by Hector, but she's supposed to be marrying this other guy. So like if you like sort of a romance of a, a, a novel of manners, so sort of Jane Austen-esque, but with like a little bit of magic and set in Mexico, I think that this is really good. I'd say Sylvia Moreno Garcia is pretty... I've read now, I read one more book from her. I would say she's pretty hit, mixed, hit or miss for me. I wouldn't say she's like an auto buy or an auto read, but I do like, this is definitely the one I've enjoyed the most and would definitely really recommend. So this is my number 10. I think this is a good example of sort of like a higher quality romantic book. So Um, number nine. Okay. I'm going to say is Dr. Thorne by Anthony Trollope. So, um, this one is, uh, the third book in the Chronicles of Barset series. And it is a series of classic Victorian literature that, uh, I started reading either last year or the year before, and it was like on my mission this year to read them all. So I did fully complete the series this year. And I would say I continue to think that the second book, which is Barchester Towers, which I read last year, is my favorite in the series. But I would put Dr. Thorne and The Warden both as kind of like tied for second place. Dr. Thorne is a lot about um, kind of like, mm, not a, I guess sort of arranged marriages or like, what does it mean to be a rich person and have certain expectations around marriage? So kind of Jane Austen-esque, but it's more from the dude point of view. So like, what does it mean for this guy to have these expectations about who he's gonna marry um, because of his family's status and wealth? So I just thought that was an interesting take. The second, the, not the second one, the fourth one, um, Framley Parsonage also kind of has that as a big theme. Actually, that's true in um, small, the small house at Allington. So in general, the series seems to be highly concerned or like very much considering that these kind of marriages based on wealth and status are not just bad for women, but are also bad for men. I just realized that's kind of a uni unifying theme. By the time we get to the small house at Allington, I'm less interested in it. <laughs> um, the first three are definitely my favorite and the back three are not as good in my opinion or like they just weren't to my taste as much. Um, I wonder if just some of the themes were wearing on me. But anyway, Anthony Trollope is such a wonderful writer. Like I absolutely love his prose, his sort of like asides to the audience his omniscience um i don't know just like the way he does his writing reads really well to a contemporary reader like a reader of today and these are just delightful so if you're looking for a very accessible victorian series i highly recommend this one um i've read them all so i'm sad that i don't have any more but i enjoyed what i read while it lasted so that was number nine then Number eight is Notes on an Execution by Danya Kukovka. And this was the winner for 2022 of the Edgar Awards. Um, this, you know, like, so this definitely could be considered a mystery. I could have put it on that list. It's definitely crime fiction. I think it reads enough like a mystery that I'm okay with it having been the winner, but I do think ultimately it's more on the literary versus genre. It doesn't, I think if you're like a casual reader of genre, you may or may not like this versus if you're more of a general fiction or a literary fiction reader, I think you're more likely to have enjoyed this, like just sort of picking up blind, but I just think it's beautifully written. Um, it's called notes on an execution. And that is sort of what the story is centering around is the story um, of uh, why this guy is about to be um, killed via the death sentence for what crimes he's done. And it's exploring um, his life of 
being a horrible person through the different women in his life. And I think that it's kind of talking or like challenging our notions about like what the death penalty is, this sort of, you know, idea of like violence beginning violence and how it's centering punishment of the perpetrator versus like reclamation for the victims. I don't know. Like there's a lot to think about in this. I think this would be a really good book club discussion. So if you're somebody who wants um, more plot in a kind of general or literary fiction book, I think that this is a good one because it does have sort of an element of a police procedural because there's um, one of the point of view characters is the woman who's bringing him to justice. But um, there's a lot to think about in this. It's beautifully written. And I definitely think, you know, I see why it's an award winner. I see why it was such a big hit when it came out. Um, and I think, you know, it's not too long. This is one that I think is uh, very recommendable to people. So number eight, really enjoyed that one. Number seven is a short story collection. And that is The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia. I read this uh, towards the beginning of the year in a video, which will actually come up a couple more times on this list, uh, where I was reading books from um, the, uh, uh, oh gosh, words, hard. I was reading books from friends of mine on BookTube, um, reading their best of 22 lists. And if I had things that were kind of already on my radar or that I was already interested in, I just went ahead and pulled them and read them in that video. And this one was on my friend Jess from Jess Owens's list. And I totally see why. This is a really lovely collection. It's very well observed. It's small, but I think my my only critique of this is that it gets a little samey. I think some of the stories are very like hitting the same note, but it's really exploring. So I guess in that sense, that's why it was a four versus a four and a half, because I really liked the writing. But as a collection, I thought it was a little like I wish there was a little more variety. But what is here is like really thoughtful, beautiful stories kind of exploring gender, religion, um, and family in the context of the black um, woman experience in America, like black women in those kind of settings or spaces like that is what this is exploring. And I thought that it did a really, really good version of that. So um, yeah, I just thought that this was a beautiful and well -obser observed little book. I think if you're looking for a small short story collection, I can highly recommend this. And I know this is one that a lot of you guys already like because this was um, one that was recommended to me by my patrons and members for the uh, five star bracket challenge I did in 2022. A lot of people recommended this one to me as one they thought I would like. And I agree. It's really, it's really, really good. Okay, so that was seven. Six is a more recent read, which is going to be The Bandit Queens by Parini Sharaf. This is one that um, is a debut, and I think it's a very strong debut. That's kind of why I put it where it is. This is a really brutal read, I should say, because it is dealing a lot with violent misogyny in traditional Indian society. Um, that's not my context, so I don't know how accurate that is or how representative it is, but, you know, I thought it was a, a very poignant and harrowing exploration of that. Um, so, you know, just FYI there, the, the, this is not a light read in some ways, though it is also very darkly comedic. So the premise is there's this woman who lives in this small village and everybody, her husband went missing, but everybody thinks that she killed him. So she, everybody kind of thinks that she's a murderer who got away with it. Um, and, you know, she kind of is like milking that a little bit. And then somebody comes to her and wants her help getting rid of their husband. And things kind of progress from there. Like there's some mob things that are involved. Uh, and there's also, I think what I really resonated with this uh, in what I really resonated with in this book uh, was just the female friendship component. Um, there are two, our main character has a friend who was her friend. And then they kind of like had a big falling out when she got married. And like now they're kind of rekindling that friendship. Um, and I just thought that that was really lovely. I thought it was a, a really nice exploration of, of how complicated friendships are over time. Um, 
I do think that this rides the line of being genre fiction. Like I've seen this on a lot of like best mystery or thrillers of the year lists. I don't think, I think this reads better as a general fiction book with a mystery or crime component to it versus a genre crime fiction book. So just know that, like, I think that this is sometimes missold in terms of its genre. That's why I put it on this list as opposed to mystery thriller. But um, I do think it's a really interesting book, very thought provoking. And I would be interested in reading more from this author in the future because she has a very distinctive voice that I thought was really well executed. So I put this at number six. And now number five uh, is one that I know is a lot of people are going to say, but Mara, this is sci-fi. And I get there's a couple of these that I get there are dystopian or sci-fi elements of some of these ones in my top five but if i'm just thinking of them like as books i think i like them better if i don't consider them to be sci-fi so parable of the talents is one of them this is so well written it is so prescient and it feels like it really does predict a lot of things that happened in the U.S. from like the mid 20 teens onwards. Uh, this has so much to say about religion and family complication, mother daughter relationships. This was originally written in 1998. And um, yeah, like I said, it's just so it feels like it really read where the country was going in a lot of ways. So I get that this is sci-fi, but what I like most about it are the literary elements of it. So I am thinking of this more as literary fiction. The writing is beautiful. The ending was just like so great. And I liked the parable of the sower as well. That's the first book in this duology, but I really, really liked parable of the talents. I think it's better. Um, yeah. I think that, the sci-fi elements I wanted more of if I was going to think of it as sci-fi. So for that reason, it just feels more literary fiction. Anyway, I gave this four stars. I really, really love this. And I really recommend um, this duology. I think it's well worth seeking out. And I definitely want to read more from Octavia Butler because this was a great, like, amuse-bouche of getting her writing. Um, okay. So then coming in at number four, I'm going to say My Brilliant Friend by Alana Ferrante. Uh, friendship, I feel like, is a recurring theme on this list. And uh, this is probably the best version of it. So I am not going to continue in this series because I feel like I got what I wanted from this. But this is an incredibly hyped literary historical fiction series. And... Um, this really delivered like it's so the writing is so fantastic it's exploring this friendship between our two main characters when they are growing up in sicily i believe if i'm remembering rightly naples sorry they're growing up in naples um and it's sort of like the post-world war ii era it's also exploring a lot about like misogyny and violence like kind of very casual violence um and just a lot about like the jealousies and petty you know, whatever between girls um, as they're growing up, you know, a lot of that is like foisted on them by society, etc. So anyway, this is a fantastic book. I got enough of it. So I don't feel like I need to keep going in the series. But I have heard from lots of people that they really love the series. Um, I'm just I yeah, I don't know. I was disappointed because there's like a thing that is set up in the prologue of this where one of them like when they're older, like when they're old women um, is missing. And we apparently never get resolution to that, which bums me out. But anyway, this definitely lived up to the hype for me. And I really enjoyed this one. And it is, yes, it's my top four star on this list. So moving into four and a half star territory, number three, I know that, so this is a great example of where like, I just don't know what list to put this on. So it's going on general fiction, which is Identity by Nora Roberts. So it's kind of like it's billed as one of her standalone romantic suspenses and it kind of is but it reads more like sort of a family drama with a crime element to it and a romantic element to it so it's just sort of like a mishmash of genre 
And so I'm just going to put it in general fiction. So it is about a, a woman who um, her roommate is murdered by this serial killer who was targeting her. And then he like steals her identity and basically ruins her life. So she has to move back to her hometown or not her hometown, but like where her mom's hometown is uh, to move in with her mom and her grandma because like she basically just like can't keep living her life where she was like in terms of the money and also just like it's hard for her to move on. So it's really a lot about um, uh like kind of fresh starts new beginnings it does include a romantic component but it also has her being really good at her job which you guys know i love and there is that suspense element kind of simmering in the background so altogether it doesn't really feel like a crime book it doesn't really feel like a romance it, it doesn't fully feel like a kind of general i don't so it's just general fiction i think it's a really good version of a nora roberts standalone and i really really enjoyed it so that is number three Number two is a short story collection with, again, this could be called sci-fi, uh, but speculative short stories called Out There by Kate Folk. I gave this four and a half stars. There are definitely some variety of quality on stories in here, but there are several that are super memorable. My favorite one, the one that really sticks out to me is the one where there's like only one woman left and she has a talk show. Like there's only one woman left on earth. And she has a talk show that all the men tune into. Um, there's several stories like that, though, where it's just like, oh, this is such an interesting premise. So this is technically kind of dystopia, science fiction, whatever. I already had it on my TBR, but then um, I read this for that same reading booktubers favorites from 2022 video that I did, um, where uh, this was on Mari from My Name is Marines. This was on her favorites of the year. So I picked it up because of you know, her having it on her best of list. And I completely agree. I think this is so thought provoking. It's really tongue in cheek and fun. And there's just a really good variety of stories in here. Some of them are hits for me. Others are not as much hits, but all in all, it's very enjoyable. And yeah, this was just a super uh, thought provoking, entertaining collection and the kind of short story collection I really enjoy. So four and a half stars for this. And then my number one um, is Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. Again, I know that this made some sci-fi lists and it, it does have some sci-fi elements to it. But to me, it really reads much more like a literary fiction novel with strong speculative elements. So that is why it made this list. But I gave this four and a half stars. This was very hype last year. I forget who all had this on their um, best of 22. I think Mari, actually. I think she she also <laughs> had this on her list and I had it on my TBR and read it because of her. I think she was the one. Um, so there you go. She just killing it, uh, crushing it here on the, the general fiction top list. So Sea of Tranquility, it has three timelines and essentially you're learning how these timelines go together. One of them is in the past and two, one is in the near future and one is in the far future. It involves um, humans being on the moon and also just like trying to understand this thing that happened. I'm trying to be vague because I think that's part of like the story unfolding. But I really love the writing. I love the themes. And um, I really love the way that the story wrapped up. Like I thought the ending was very satisfying. It's also pretty short, um, which I think was to its benefit. And yeah, I don't know. I just thought like this was a really well-observed, really lovely novel. Um, this definitely makes me want to read more from the author. I've heard that this is in a series, technically, like apparently because I read this out of order, I've technically spoiled myself on some of the earlier books, but I didn't notice it. it didn't bother me. So FYI there. But yeah. This was my favorite, what I would say, like literary fiction or general fiction choice for the year, uh, even though it does have some strong sci-fi there. So we'll put her there. And for time stamping Mara 2424, we are done with the list and are moving to comments. So um, that was my list, guys. Let's see here. 
watching from work while working from home. Love it. I hope that you found something, um, Maricel, uh, to enjoy in general fiction, though, as you could tell, a lot of these were sort of like hybrid picks. Love the sweater. Thank you. This is literally a blanket, but made into a sweater. I got it for Christmas for my nieces and um, they call it their moo moo because it's basically like a little dress and it's so cozy and comfy. It's, it's wonderful. Hello. Hello. Hello to Ukraine. Hope you're doing well. Um, I also read the first three Barsetshire books this year. Barchester Towers is my favorite so far too. Yeah, I think that it, I mean, it's kind of the one of the six that is sort of like the classic, you know, it's the best. I think it's the most read, the most taught. And I do think it's the best of them, which I feel like is kind of a controversial opinion. I don't know. It sounded like, I feel like the cool kids don't think it's the best one, <laughs> but I did. So I don't know what to say. I did love the warden, which I think is an unpopular opinion. Um, yay, I'm glad the Europe friendly timing worked well. Mixing things up. Yes, notes on an execution was really wonderful. I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Uh, my friend Red Trollop recently adding your recommendation. He's on my list for 2024. Yay, I hope you enjoy. Um, you can skip the war. I love the warden, but it's because I love nerding out about church history. So you can just skip to Barchester Towers if you want to. So. Hello to the fairy librarian. Really like the Bandit Queens. I think I would have enjoyed it more, though, if it hadn't been sold to me as a thriller. It was very good as a general literary fiction read, though. I agree. I do think it's disserved by being pitched as a thriller because it's just I don't think it is meaningfully. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it or. Like, I see how they get there. Because if you've read it, you know, there is like a heavy crime component to it. So I get it. But I just think it would be better served. I think it would find an audience um, more with the right expectations if it was like general fiction. But like, it also has this mystery plot happening in the background. So i um, interested in reading The Bandit Queens. I hope you enjoy it. I really like The Parable of the Sower, but didn't like Towns quite as much. Yes to great writing. Oh, well, Cynthia, I think you're sort of... Uh, in the minority, because I've heard a lot of people say they really didn't like the parable of the sower, but really liked the parable of the talents. I don't know. But I thought, I think they're actually pretty similar in quality. For me, I just, the talents has that sort of like prescient element to it that just made it so like, whoa, okay, you really called a lot of the things that were going to happen in 2016. Um, but anyway, I think parable of the sower is actually kind of like underrated because people don't read it as much, it seems like. Parable of the Talents is incredible. If you want more literary butler, definitely pick up Kindred next. Um, that's definitely on my list. I forget the one that I was I had my eye on to read from her next. I don't think it was Kindred, but um, I'll have to double check that. I really liked Identity. The mystery element reminded me of Out Fox by Sandra Brown. Sandra Brown definitely uh, is one of those, you know, tried and true romantic suspense authors. So that definitely makes sense. I picked up the Bandit Queen on your rack and ended up really enjoying it. I'm so glad to hear that, Anna. Um, it gave it definitely gave uh, debut vibes towards the end as I felt it was too long, but otherwise really poignant and funny. I agree. I think you could tell it was a debut in some of its pacing. I, I definitely agree with that, which for me is why it was more of a four versus a four and a half because, yeah. But I agree. I thought the writing was great. Um, it's definitely... Yeah, looking forward to more books from Perini Sharoff for sure. Yeah, I think it was very promising as a debut. I think Emily St. John Mandel straddles the line between sci-fi and lit fic. I agree. And a lot of the things on this list, <laughs> I feel like, are straddling that line. Um, yeah, it's this is part of why, like, literary, it definitely has... It's a lot about the kind of atmosphere, mood, and like where the energy of the book is, which are very hard to define. Um, and also, I do think some some of the more like quote unquote plotless literary fiction definitely has some tropes in terms of its character types that make it feel more like lit fic. Um, but anyway, yeah, I felt like this had enough of that ineffable sort of like mood to warrant being put on this list. Uh, yes, I can finally catch a live. I love that for you. I also continue to love your handle. Um, 
When she referenced the pandemic, I thought she was talking about COVID, which hampered my enjoyment of the book. Maybe should reread it at some point. Yeah, it was an interesting book because I think it was written before COVID, but it came out during COVID, if I'm remembering rightly. Or maybe she wrote it at the very beginning of COVID. I don't know. Anyway, it definitely has um, a Sea of Tranquility definitely does have a lot of elements about pandemic stuff. Uh, also adding Trollop. Ooh, I hope you enjoy. I'm currently reading The Way We Live Now by Trollop and really enjoying it, but it's so different from the Bar Sutcher series. See, that's one that I need to read at some point because I like his writing. I read it back when I was a kid, but I think I didn't really like it or it, I see like I, I, um, I, sorry, words hard. I found a list from when I was a kid in one of my old copies of a classic once. And I had marked this one as one that I had read, but I just don't remember hardly anything about it. So now that I've done a reread of the Bar Setcher Chronicles, or now that I've done a read of the Bar Setcher Chronicles, I feel like it's time to tackle that one. Cause I feel like that's sort of like as a standalone, his, his best known one. Sea of Tranquility was one of my favorites this year, too. I read it on your recommendation. Oh, my gosh. I am so glad to hear that. That is wonderful. Um, even if I should say, I know sometimes people read things on my recommendation and don't enjoy it, which makes me sad. But I'm always very flattered when people read things on my recommendation. That is a wonderful feeling. Have you read any Angela Thurkel? She wrote in the 30s. I think she has books set in Trollope's Barsetshire. I have very much enjoyed her books. I've never even heard of that. That's so interesting. Okay, well, I'll have to, I'll have to look that up. Um, doo -doo -doo, coming over here to make a note. Um, High Rising by... Angela Thurkill. Interesting. Oh, wow. Huh. Okay. Yeah. I'm kind of intrigued by that as like fan fiction, basically. <sighs> Designer. Uh, Designer Project. Hello, Mara. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Haven't read My Brilliant Friend yet, but I'm so happy it became popular. It's always lovely when a non-English book becomes popular on English booktube. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's always lovely to to get things in translation. I'm trying to be more intentional about that. Um, and I do feel like uh, we're at least spoiled in the English speaking world of having a lot of things translated into our mother tongue. Um, whereas I know, I don't know, there's always like the politics of like what gets translated and what doesn't. Um, so Um, what classics do you recommend as your all-time favorites? I plan on doing a Jane Austen marathon. Well, that is a great place to start. Um, I do have a whole video recommending on where to start with classics. If I had to, I mean, like my favorite classic obviously is Jane Eyre because that's my all-time favorite book. Um, I would definitely recommend people starting with Trollope because I think he's very readable what are my other favorites? It's just, I don't know. It's hard to say. Some of it too is because it's now been a while since I've read some of these classics. And like, I wonder what I would think of them if I went back and read them. That is always in kind of the back of my mind, but you can't go wrong with Jane Austen. I read reread Jane Austen frequently. Um, if my reading count included my number of like Pride and Prejudice rereads, it would be pretty obscene. I did just recently get an annotated copy of Pride and Prejudice because I was doing um, I was on the All About Agatha po podcast, which was such a thrill. Um, and I was talking with Kemper about just generally like classics. And um, he brought up that he was reading the annotated Pride and Prejudice. And I was intrigued. So I got a copy. And it's like 700 pages with all of the notes. And I at some point would like to do a reread with that, like to read all the annotations. Um. Agree with the foreshadowing of events today with talents? Yeah, for sure. Little Women would be a good classic to start with, I think. Yeah, I think that it is very approachable. Um, 
definitely very approachable. My overall guidance on where to start with classics is to pick a genre that you like and read the classic version of it. So, yeah. Well, that was my general fiction list. Um, you guys are getting my sci-fi fantasy one this weekend. That is a pre-recorded video. And then next week I will be doing lives to talk about my best horror of the year and my best nonfiction of the year. Both of those are very short lists. Those are only five book lists. So that's why I decided to do both of them in one week. Um, and let me know, like part of me wants to do them back to back. I right now have them scheduled for Tuesday and Thursday night. Let me know if you guys think that it would make sense to, since they're short ones to kind of just do them back to back on one day. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, don't make the mistake I made of your first classic read being David Copperfield. Good book, but very depressing. I, I discovered as an adult, I'm not really a lover of Dickens the way I was when I was younger. So I wouldn't point you there, but he is very readable. So love out all about Agatha. I felt like my worlds were colliding when I heard you on there. It was a great episode. Oh my gosh. Thank you. It was such a dream. Um, because I love that podcast. That's what I usually listen to if I'm making an, uh, an Agatha Christie video. Like, I'll listen to that to kind of get in the mood. So it was surreal to hear my own voice coming over the airwaves on it. But that was definitely one of my highlights of the year. Yeah. Well, I think I still have enough time to go have lunch before my next meeting. So I'm going to go do that. But thank you guys for joining me. Thank you to my live crew. You guys are great. And also thank you to the re replay crew. Um, hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you live again next week, uh, to talk about the best horror of the year. So tune in for, you know, a scary episode. Uh, hope you guys are doing well wherever you are. Thank you. I will enjoy my lunch. Hope you guys enjoy your dinner, lunch, breakfast, wherever you are. Um, stay safe. And oh yeah, I guess I probably won't talk to you live until after Christmas. So for those of you who celebrate, Happy Christmas, and um, I hope you have a wonderful time either with your family or just relaxing, whatever, if you are a celebrator of that holiday. So, um, oh my gosh, you're so kind. Um, bravery and honest takes. Yes, I can do nothing but be honest. So um, I hope you guys enjoy. That is a, a wonderful thing to hear. Happy holidays. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. Happy holidays. And goodbye.